Few things in life are certain, but there is one thing we can be absolutely sure of. Sooner or later, all of us will be dead. But what we can't know for absolutely sure is when it will happen. We can't tell exactly what we'll die of. It could be a common illness. Or it could be some kind of alarmingly unlikely freak accident. There's no way of knowing until the moment it happens. Wow. Thank goodness this doctor's out of frame. Yeah. But anyway, even though we don't know exactly when and how you're going to die, we can work out the odds looking at past experience. So in this case, last year, 398 pedestrians died in a transport-based accident. Right, so as one of a population of 62,262,000, my individual yeah. chance well, you of actually work dying across out. the road is... Uh, 398 out of 62 million-ish, you come out at around about... 0.00064% uh, chance, or give or take 1 in 150,000 chance. I suppose you wanted to improve your odds or reduce the chance of dying across the whole population. Well, actually, already over the last couple of centuries, life expectancy has gone up dramatically. Uh, through things like public health initiatives, sanitation, that kind of thing. So better nutrition. Yeah, yeah. Uh, vaccinations, antibiotics, all sorts of medical advances. So you're now very unlikely to die in infancy or in childbirth or from infectious diseases or uh, even minor accidents. Well, actually, you're very unlikely to die for most of your life. Just the bit at the end that gets you. <laughs> yeah, okay, you're very likely to die at the end of your life. Uh, but actually, uh, last year, in 2010, half of the people who died were 78 or older. And that's still going up? Yep, it goes up every year. And when you do die, uh, the chances are to be something like uh, heart or circulatory disease. Or cancer. Yeah, yeah, the, the big ones. And uh, to be honest, for the most part, it's genetic factors. There's very little you can do. Although uh, there are a few lifestyle things that do impact. So, like high blood pressure, which increases your chance of getting a stroke or heart attack. Yeah, and uh, actually the Blood Pressure Association claim if everyone in the UK had under six grams of salt a day, it would save around about 20,000 lives a year. So what would that do to my odds of dying of a heart attack? Unfortunately, not that much, because uh, it's a distribution. If you look at, uh, let's say, the number of people who have different amounts of salt in their diet, it's a wonderful kind of bell curve. At the top end here, we could save some lives, but only by shifting everyone up the other way. So we'd all be eating blander food just to uh, save a few yeah, lives yeah, at this yeah. end. You would save lives over here, but only through a campaign of encouraging everyone to have less salt. But even something that does affect my individual chance of dying. Like if you smoked. Exactly. Because that knocks years off your life expectancy. But everybody knows that. And yet still about one in five of the adult population chooses to smoke. So is that really anybody else's business? Oh yeah, so it's kind of, once the government's made sure we have the data at our disposal, how far do they then go to protect us from death? Exactly. So for example, the government could ban all men under 25 from driving. Yeah, but it wouldn't be fair. The majority of road casualties are male. No, you're actually, you're right. Uh, if you look at last year's data, uh, let's have a look. 73.8%. Exactly, and I bet a large chunk of those are, say, 16 to 24. Uh, yeah, there were 358 deaths last year. Exactly, so if you banned all men under 25 from driving, you'd probably save around that number of lives. Yeah, but uh, if you banned all women from driving as well, you'd save fewer lives, but you'd still save more people. Okay, so we ban everyone under 25, and in fact, if you stopped everyone under 25 and over 65 from driving or, or being a passenger or, or, or walking on bus or, or, yeah, or cycling or any of that, then uh, you would save half the road accident deaths. Yeah, but you could ban everyone from driving, you know, and save all the deaths. Just don't let anyone go out. Ah, but where do most deaths happen? I bet it's in bed. In fact, last year in England and Wales, there were 94 deaths that were, well, falls involving bed. Now, these are needless, pointless deaths that we could avoid if only we had a campaign to, first of all, ban bunk beds, and secondly, get rid of dangerous, slippery duvets. Tuck in for comfort and safety. And a man who smokes raises his risk of dying in the next seven years by 5%. Relative risk. Relative risk, yeah. yeah. But if he's single, 
That raises his risk of dying in the next seven years by 6%. So the NHS should close down all the quit smoking clinics and open singles bars instead. I don't think that's strictly selfless advice. That... It is. If I smoked, that would raise my risk of dying by 6%. But by being single, I only raise my risk by 3%. So in order to get the same protective effect, I'd have to be married twice. No, no, no. Marriage aside, I don't think percentages work that way. Legalise that... bigamy now. Statistically speaking, for women. Evidence-based policy. Actually, if you want evidence-based policy, forget singles bars, just go for bars. Time and time again, all research shows that drinking alcohol gives you a longer life expectancy over not drinking alcohol. Very true, especially for men. Actually, for men, purely by drinking, you can half your risk of a heart attack. Just, just, just through alcohol. Better have another quick preventative measure then. Done.